Hi Mel, do these videos get more views than the old Waffle on a Wednesday videos? What have you changed the format? The old format was much better. That comes from Stacy Lahav. Well, Stacy, today's Wednesday, so for your viewing pleasure, this is Waffle on a Wednesday. Well, we got some questions to answer this week, so let's crack on and get straight into it. The first question comes from Bob Horner, hashtag Waffle on a Wednesday. Hi Mel, really like your channel. I only discovered it a few months ago, but I have watched a lot of your back catalogue videos. Anyway, a couple of quick questions. We do love a quick question. <laughs> How many vans have you converted and what did you do in your previous job? Thanks and keep it going. Well, Bob, first of all, thank you for the compliment. Really appreciate it. Now, to answer your question, how many vans I've converted in the past, I really can't say. I've converted so many, I've lost count. But I've been doing that since... I don't know. <laughs> Crikey. How long have I been messing about in vans? Good question. Probably 20 years. The best part of, anyway. Now, as far as previous jobs are concerned, well, I've had quite a few. I've started off my working career as it were working in a factory a plastic molding factory well i went on to actually start up my own plastic molding factory and it was quite successful until i had a complete mental breakdown and decided to sell everything <laughs> and for a little while after that i got involved in the motor trade hence camper vans and when rail track finally kicked me out of my workshop i became a truck driver and that was my last job was driving trucks and I absolutely hated it. And thanks to the recent global pandemic, I've actually become a full-time YouTuber. So this is what I do for a living. I make YouTube videos. And the only reason I can do this for a living is due to people like yourself that actually watch my videos. So thank you for tuning in and watching today's Waffle on a Wednesday. And if like Bob, you are new around here, my name's Mel and I live full time in this Mercedes Sprinter camper van that I converted all by myself. And that's pretty much what I make videos about, along with my metal detecting and scuba diving adventures. So if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Like I said, I really do appreciate your support. So thank you. Now talking about camper van conversions, Ray has got a really good question and he starts his question with a hashtag. And I say that to everyone, please, if you want to ask me a question, please start that question with a hashtag. It just makes it a lot easier for me to find the questions that you want me to answer on a waffle on a Wednesday. So, as I was saying, Ray asks, hashtag waffle on a Wednesday, I have a question for you, Mel. I want to buy a camper van. Which do you think is the best value for money? And what price do you think you need to pay to get a good van? Well, Ray, I've got to say, that is a fantastic question and one I could make an entire video about. But to keep it short and sweet, I would say be really careful that you don't get scammed, especially if you're buying a van on eBay. There are a lot of scammers out there at the moment, especially on eBay. If the price is too good to be true, then usually it is. Don't ever part with any money until you actually physically see the vehicle. Never ever put a deposit on a van that you've only seen online it is a real minefield out there at the moment so please please be very careful when looking for a van to buy but i will say just try and buy the best you can something with as low a mileage as possible and as new as possible whatever your budget allows you to buy do make sure you do a HPI check to check stuff like if there's any outstanding finance on the vehicle or if it's been an insurance total loss because if it has, it means its insurer insurance value will be less than what you're going to pay for it. So you could find yourself out of pocket in the event you need to make a claim on an insurance. Good luck, I hope you find the vehicle of your dreams. Now a couple of weeks ago I made a video about charging your vehicle leisure batteries using an EV charging station. And unsurprisingly, I did get quite a few negative and quite a few positive comments on that video. Comments just like this one left by Les Unsworth. Totally disagree using this to charge your van's batteries. Should sort our own method, i.e. power bank, solar, or running your own vehicle to charge your batteries. Well, Les, you're absolutely right. I do actually have solar panels on the roof of my van. But like I said in the video, charging your leisure batteries using solar in the winter is nigh on impossible. It's a real arduous task. 
And yes, I do have power banks, but again, you'd need to charge those power banks using solar power. And the other point you make is, yeah, I can charge my leisure batteries by running my engine. And I quite often do, but only when I'm actually driving my van. Because it is actually bad for your engine to just sit idling whilst you charge your leisure batteries. Well, not only is it bad for your engine, it's also very bad for the environment. And we are all trying to do our bit for the environment, aren't we? So by plugging my vehicle into an electric charging point, not only am I doing my bit to save the planet, I'm also saving my engine and saving my pocket as well because diesel is really expensive. And if I was to run my vehicle purely to charge my leisure batteries, it would work out to be quite uneconomical and a darn sight more expensive than using an EV charging point. But thanks for the great comment because it does help the algorithm push my content. So I really do appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Now judging by some of the comments left on that video, it became apparent to me that some people just don't understand the concept that a camper van is capable of charging its leisure batteries using 240 volt hookup. After all, a lot of camper vans do actually go to campsites and plug into 240 volt and charge their leisure batteries. And if a camper van is fitted out with the capability of charging its leisure batteries using 240 volt, then there's no reason why that camper van can't use an EV charging point as long as you've got the right leads. But nevertheless, some people just didn't quite get it. It would appear that they assume you're putting 240 volts into a 12 volt battery. And I say this because of comments such as this left by ALTV Amp. There are a few issues with this. EV chargers charge lithium ion batteries, not lead acid. <laughs> not the same and you have no regulation. Also an EV charger output is 32 amps or more. Highly dangerous for charging a lead acid battery with no charge regulation and a 16 amp cable. It could also damage the EV charging point. I think they will ban it when they realize, especially if it causes problems. Well, there you go. The problem is that some people just don't quite understand. Okay, so first off, let's address the issue of what batteries you're charging, whether it be lithium batteries or lead acid or AGMs even. It doesn't really matter. After all, you're not plugging those batteries directly into the EV charging station. I mean, why would you do that? It's 240 volts coming out of there. And if you've got 12 volt batteries, of course things are going to go, going to go bang. I mean, it's just basic common sense. You still need some kind of charger or charge regulator inside your van. And that's why I started that video off by specifically saying if you've got the capabilities already fitting in your van to charge your vehicle leisure batteries using 240 volt then there's no reason why you can't use an EV charging station as long as you've got the uh, right adaptive leads. You see you're not plugging directly into your 12 volt supply you're charging your batteries from the EV station via built-in charge controller that you've got in your camper van already. And I'm really shocked and surprised how many people said this, that you're going to blow your leisure batteries up if you plug them into an EV charging point. So please, if there's anyone out there that thinks it's okay to do that, just don't do it. If you haven't got 240 volt hookup fitted to your camper van, then don't plug in your batteries directly to an EV charging point. It simply doesn't work that way. You do need a charge controller between the EV charging point and your batteries. You need a charge controller to take the 240 volt that's coming from the EV charging station to right. drop it Enough down about EV to chargers. a suitable voltage and charge rate to charge your leisure batteries. It's not a new concept by any means. So I really hope that does clear that up. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Now Ian Bram will come up with a really good idea. Just get an EV sticker made and stick it on the back of your van. <laughs> Actually, that's, not, that's a bad idea. That's a terrible idea. Now Steve Williams left this really strange comment. So does this mean, in theory, you could walk to Tesco with a Bluetti under your arm and recharge it from an EV charger? Yes, of course you can. <laughs> in theory. You wouldn't want to though. I mean, my Bluetti that's under my bed is quite heavy. Weighs a good 20 kilos, I do believe. <laughs> but yeah, in theory, you could charge your Bluetti at an EV charging point. Maybe I'll make a video about that. 
Now talking about charging Bluettis at an EV charging point, Joe Lyon makes a good point. The big question, how much and how long? And in brackets, I suppose that depends on how low your ETI is when you start. But let's say it's about 50%. Also, if Tesco's was closed, do parking charges apply? Some supermarkets only allow you to park for the three hours limit whilst it's open. Interesting vid and glad you warned people about not abusing the system. After all, its primary use is to service EVs only. Well, Joe, you're absolutely right. And I did stress that in the video that charging points really shouldn't be abused by us camper van owners because it won't win us any friends at the end of the, end of the day. And I did say that in the video that please only use those charging points at night time or maybe when the supermarket is shut. Now, as far as parking restrictions are concerned, it's very important to check that for yourself, especially where Tesco's is concerned, because a lot of Tesco stores, you're absolutely right, there is a three hour parking limit. But my local Tesco's here in Stroud, it has no parking restrictions. Whereas one just up the road in Dursley has, like you say, the three hour parking limit. So that's a really good valid point, Joe. Maybe it's one I should have brought up in that video. Now, as far as how long it takes and how much it costs to charge the Blue Etty, well, I think I will actually have to make a video about that. I'll do a little experiment later on just to see how long it does take and what it costs to charge a Blue Etty. Yeah, I'll give that some consideration. Good question, Joe. Thank you. I've actually just found another four comments, people asking exactly the same thing. Hi Melm, another great video, quick question. Would you consider doing a video on the cost of charging, say a Bluetti or an EB70 or a Jackery from 0% from one of these EV chargers? Great video Mel, how much did it cost you to charge up? And how long were you there? <laughs> I wonder how much it cost to charge the Bluetti from 0 to 100%. Any guesses? Well, there you go. Well, it would appear I've got no choice but to make a Bluetti charging, a Bluetti at an EV charging point station video type experiment. <laughs> I'll give it some thought and see what I can come up with. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, even if it is only to watch me charge an EV, not an EV, charge a Bluetti at an EV charging point. Bit of a tongue twister that. Right, enough about the EV charging. Let's find the troll of the week, shall we? <laughs> okay, so I've got a troll of the week. Troll of the week. And this week's troll of the week is Mike Holloway. <laughs> and he says, Fa ha ha, dude, still trying to speak like a teenager. Ever seen the far show? Yeah, I love the Fast Show. That's where I got that expression I come up with every now and again when I say, brilliant. It's from the Fast Show, right? Everyone knows that. Doesn't mean I'm trying to be a teenager. Unlike some people that use the word dude, thinks Google is a reliable source of info. Yeah, it is. Google's a fantastic reliable source of info. You'll find me right there on Google. I love Google. Google's brilliant. <laughs> Unlike your videos, um, Mike Holloway my piece of advice to you would be don't give up your day job because your singing is absolutely terrible here's a clip of Mike Holloway trying to sing <laughs> just put your fingers in your ears first before I play it I warn you now it ain't good <laughs> So there you go, that's Mike Holloway singing. If you enjoyed his singing, then go check out his channel and why not consider subscribing to his channel? Don't think I'll be doing that though. Sorry, Mike. But thanks for leaving a comment anyway. Unfortunately, your singing is not brilliant. <laughs> now, here's a bit of a strange request. <laughs> this comes from Spectrum Mad. Great video as always. Thank you very much. You need to do a showering video like Rebecca did. 
Did you see how many views she got? <laughs> well, Spectrum Mad, I don't think anybody really wants to see me take a shower at a truck stop. But if you'd like to see Rebecca take a shower at a truck stop, I'll leave a link to that video up here purely for your viewing pleasure. Thanks for watching this video. Really do appreciate it. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. I'll see you very soon. Ta-da for now.